Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demani Group. In Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production modeling of this, this uh, 18 volt work flashlight. In previous sessions, we looked at creating splines and um, some theory on some of the surface features we'll be using to create this uh, flashlight. But before we start modeling, we need to uh, do some layout work, which will uh, help us when it does come time to start building features in SolidWorks. So we need to develop a modeling strategy. What features are we going to use to create the geometry? The top is relatively blocky. We can use some of the extrude features, perhaps some cuts to form these shapes, some fillets on the corner, and some manual techniques to, uh, to build these chamfers instead of relying on the chamfer tool in SolidWorks. Uh, we have this indented area that has a diving surface. This diving surface will allow us to build a chamfer that uh, fades out seamlessly at a certain point. The handle will be created with a patchwork of surface features, and the base is also pretty blocky. We can get away with an ex some extrudes, perhaps a new surface, uh, and to create this top crown face, uh, some fillets on the edges, and then some manual techniques to, to build these chamfers instead of using the chamfer tool. So we need to begin with what we know. We know that the work flashlight uses an existing 18 volt battery that's already in production. Uh, this manufacturer would like to add a new uh, product to its to its line of handheld uh, power tools. So we can actually sketch uh, copy sketches from one part to another using Control C and Control V. So I'm going to jump into the battery here. And I'd like to copy this layout sketch that has the key dimensions uh, on the right plane of this battery. So I'll hit select the sketch in the feature tree and hit control C. That'll copy it. I'll jump to the part I'd like to paste it into, select the target plane, and hit control V and I'll paste it in. So we go edit the sketch and note that the sketch is blue. Um, it's, unfortunately you can't bring in uh, relations to external geometry when you when you copy sketches. So uh, best practice I like to use is I'll create a center line or a point and place that on the origin. That way any relations or dimensions I add in this sketch will go to that center line or to that origin point. Now all I should need to do is just uh, grab that center line and drag it to the origin, snap it, select this bottom line, select a midpoint, and now the sketch is fully defined. So I'd like to bring in this um, picture. I've already done it here for the sake of expediency. This is a sketch from an industrial designer and I'll use this to trace over. So if I was to do that uh, to start, I would go Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture, and then I'd browse for my file. Now when this comes in, it's probably going to come in really, really large like this. So there is an auto scale uh, feature in SolidWorks. I don't think it works particularly well. That's if you enable scale tool. So I just like placing this manually. I'll grab these handles on the corner and start scaling that down. Uh, note that I have a, a construction line as an overall height reference. So I should just need to line up the top here and just keep scaling it down until the top of the flashlight is um, positioned correctly. So now that I have that uh, positioned, just show that reference sketch again, I'm going to start and create this layout sketch. So I've already created the sketch, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, dimensions and relations, but what I'm doing with this uh, layout sketch is locking in all of the key dimensions of this part. So that, and, and I spend a lot of time building this layout sketch. I want it to be intelligent, uh, so that way changes I make to layout sketch will quickly change key dimensions. Perhaps the overall size of the reflector housing needs to change, or the length of the unit needs to change, or the size of the handle needs to change. So I spend lots of time creating these layout sketches, as they'll save a lot of time downstream. So I've created a layout sketch on the um, the right plane, and I've also created one on the front plane, which will define this uh, this shape. And I'll use a lot of these uh, entities later to build new features and, and curves from. I also have a sketch uh, outlining the overmold shape, uh, the the soft rubber that will be overmolded onto the rigid plastic to form uh, both color breaks and uh, details in in the handle for some cushioning. So you can capture the industrial design intent in SolidWorks by using the sketch picture tool to bring the sketch picture into SolidWorks. We're going to spend a lot of time creating layout sketches. Um, that way 
all of the key dimensions are defined in a couple sketches that are kept at the top of the tree. The best practice when using these is to never actually directly reference any entity in the layout sketch. We don't want it to be absorbed in subsequent features. We'll use convert entities to convert the required sketch entities into a new sketch and then we'll use those to build new features from. So thanks for watching. Uh, please follow the Demani Group on LinkedIn where we'll be posting new installments of Surfaces and Splines.